Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 102 of the White Knuckle Podcast, powered by Ozonix. Undetectable, undeniable. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the White Knuckle Podcast. I am joined tonight by, well, a guy that probably doesn't need a whole lot of introduction, Mr. Jared Scheffler and Logan McNulty. Now, Logan is a guy that's uh, been around Todd for a long time, right, Logan? That's correct. Yeah, for for as long as Todd has been running the show circuit, uh, we've been rubbing elbows, me and Todd. How did you and Todd ever cross paths? Like, what was the first time, I guess, from both of you? And, and Logan, if you want to go first. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, well, my, my father builds tree stands in the, in the hunting industry. He's got a small company, like a climbing tree stand company. And um, I'll tell you what, Todd, I, it was in my early 20s, and I think Todd was in his late 20s, uh, starting White Knuckle Productions. And that particular summer... I had watched the uh, the Wenzel Brothers DVD that they had come out with. It was called like Primal Dreams. Primal Dreams. And yep. yeah, yep. yeah. And it was just a lot of this psychedelic music put together with some hunting. And, and it was kind of the first film I had seen that was done like that. And shortly thereafter, I find out about this guy, Todd, that, that sort of films in a documentary style filming. And I had never seen it that in the hunting industry so so it, it was intriguing um kind of hearing something about a story leaving a state with with not very good deer hunting to a, to the best state in the country for deer hunting and and me being 20 or 22 whatever i was i said man this this is exactly what i want to do you know i want to leave tennessee where there are no deer with the you know no deer with a branch antler horn running around i'd much rather be in iowa and so um so I seeked him out, man. I saw him at a trade show in Ohio and and just walked up to his booth and said, hey, you know, told him who I was and told him I liked what he's doing. And, and he insisted that I took a DVD there on the spot. And so um, I watched that first DVD uh, that evening in the hotel room. I think we were staying at like an extended stay. They had a VCR or what, a DVD player. I said, hey, I'm going to watch this right now. And so I started with Todd, probably like many people, just as a, as a fan, you know, of what he was doing, you know. Yes, how about sir. you? How about you, um, Jared? I, I, the first time I met Todd was at the Michigan, Lansing, Michigan. That was my, my first three day show. And, uh, so I met Todd just a little bit at that show. Just that was the first time I knew anything about white knuckle productions. And I, I didn't really get to meet Todd at that show much you know he was busy had a lot going on I think that was his first or second year of taking white knuckle on the road to the shows um I think he had his let's see two I think he actually he had two videos out then so he was a year ahead of of me in that I just remember uh it was probably about halfway through that show season in Illinois where we really actually got a chance to you know get together and talk a little bit and he was doing a very do-it-yourself style same as me and it was just like we both had this mutual great respect for one another you know i was on one side of the fence doing public land he was doing small parcel you know more knock on door style and and just getting out there and and, and there wasn't a whole lot of other types of productions out there at that time that i remember doing like a true do-it-yourself style uh video and you know of course now there's a there's quite of arsenal but we just had a great mutual <laughs> respect for one another right out of the gate for what we were both doing and uh at that show i remember at the illinois show that same year that's actually when i met logan or when i first remember meeting logan and uh <laughs> and that's the first kind of show where todd and i got a little bit of one-on-one -on -one and got to actually chat for a little bit and, and connect a little bit and then 
you know, I guess over the years, you know, that was, was that was 11, 11 shows seasons ago, 10 years ago, uh, this, this past spring. And, uh, so yeah, um, it's, uh, you know, you, I just got to know Todd mostly through the shows, but I got, I was fortunate enough two years ago coming up here in a couple of weeks to, to go down and spend a weekend with him and his wife, Katie, and, and get to know him a little bit more. And, and, uh, of course, <laughs> you know, we've, we've shared quite a few beers together over the years, you know, uh, just a couple here and there, but, uh, and, and a lot of good stories along the way. So I just, that was, uh, that was my first. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, I just have to interject. I, and I know Jared, I shared this with you, but, uh, like I, Logan, I remember um, Jared going down there, and uh, Todd was kind of texting me while this was going on and so forth. And and uh, Jared left, I think, on a Sunday, right, Jared? Or maybe it was a Monday. Correct. I don't, I don't remember. And yep. Todd, like yep. he 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 like was waiting to call me, and he called me. He's like, "You would not believe the gear that this guy has." He almost I don't remember <laughs> that he had some sort of name for it out of like a, a Star Trek movie. He looked like whatever out of a, out of a, a or excuse me, not not Star Trek, um, <laughs> uh, Star Wars. Um, you know, with all this gear, he's like he's got like twelve cameras and fifteen microphones, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't even believe that Todd survived a minute with you, Jared, because I I can't Todd. Had, I love it. Todd towards the end here had become such a minimalist in terms of his equipment because he was so paranoid. He was like a drug dealer almost in in that um, he was look like you know just afraid to do anything out of the. I guess not like a drug dealer, but um, he was paranoid about about <laughs> everything. Yeah. Right. yeah, right, right, right. Well, well, and it was it was probably a little bit different because we were chasing turkeys right. versus, you know, we weren't going after whitetails. So turkeys are a little bit, you know, less, you know, at least what I see out there is people don't take turkeys quite as serious as deer generally. And that's kind of the way Todd had, or, had portrayed it to me for his own self a little bit. But yeah, I just remember I, I, I jumped out with the camera gear to, and, and we we walked across it was like a cut plowed cornfield or something like that for three four hundred yards and and many many times Todd would just turn around and just laugh hysterically that you know me back there filming him with this mega camera and this vest on and <laughs> think well, the best thing that we have that holds the camera and and uh yeah so uh it was uh yeah, that was. Uh, I, I think you mentioned too that he made a. Yeah, he had said something about he, he has way too big a camera for this or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, something you know, like yeah. that. Which is which, which? 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 Yeah, there's there's definitely some truth to that. So, dude, Jer- Jared spares no expense when it comes to production, and the camera rig he has, I think I think it trumps most of the camera rigs that National Geographic uses. I mean, it's unbelievable. So for Todd. The handicam man, he was probably, yeah, blown away when Jared stepped out of the truck looking like Sasquatch walking around with this freaking train <laughs> over his head. And <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, so that's probably what you were hearing, Jason. You were hearing that he looked like he came out of a spaceship or something. And exactly. That's, that's pretty true, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, he just, he just. And that's couldn't... what the deer think, too, when they see me. They're like, right. what is I that? Know. You know, it's a curiosity <laughs> thing. You know, it's like, I got to come in there and check out what is it? Is that a piece of machinery? Yeah. You know, they yeah, don't, yeah. You know, they don't really see it as. As a piece of machinery. They, they, it's a new they farm implement. It's serious. <laughs> that's that's serious. It's, it's, my, it's, my, it's my ground blind, so to speak, I guess. Yeah, you call yeah, it. yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it don't work yeah, that's that. good. Mm. Yes, Indeed. You know, that's fun stuff. So did you guys kill a turkey that weekend, Jer? We we did not. And the funny thing about that is, is we were very close to, on that actual first evening we went out, and uh, we were in a blind, and uh, you know this is—we were just doing it for fun. You know, I came down there for a couple of nights, and he was going turkey out, and I, so I'll bring my camera. You know, like I haven't—that's the only turkey hunting I've done for 15 years—is is that yeah. weekend with Todd. That's it. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we got in that—you know—in that blind, and you know, all of a sudden it's a little bit more tight quarters with that big camera, and. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, when this, when this Tom came in, 
you know, from the way I remember it, Todd was had a he, he was going to be able to shoot it, but then I needed to get my shot, and I was just like trying to figure out how to make room in this blind, like get where I needed to be or whatever. And uh, you know, it, I from what I remember, the big camera in the blind kind of cost that first moment, that first shot that Todd had, which was a really good shot, and so um, we never ended up getting the getting the bird and <laughs> and. Uh, so yeah, I caught. That's not. That's not a big deal. I mean, you, you look. You you've killed a world record. I mean, what what's the matter to let you know a smaller tom walk? And so that's yeah. Wasn't that Todd, Todd's first Todd first did. first turkey too? Wasn't that his yeah. first turkey? That world record. Unbelievable. Turkey? Yeah, this guy. If you ever watch that video and listen to him calling with that, I mean, he sounds like a dying rooster or something. And he's sitting here and he's. This, this bird shows up and it's got I don't know twenty two beards or something and and Todd, Todd kills him man and he, and he just about cut that thing up and started frying it not even knowing he killed the world record turkey the one out of ten billion you know it's unbelievable yeah, didn't it have like didn't it have like forty nine inches of beard or something crazy like that <laughs> oh it was I think it was a it was it was something up there like that and had had and let's give credit where credit's due whether we like to or not had he not texted a picture to i think it was chris brackett um yep yeah and those guys were about him and him and dallas were about ready to start cutting into it um and and maybe yeah. they even the some some of the stories say that they have or they had at that point, and some say that they hadn't. Um, and they start to cut into it when Chris Brackett calls Todd and says, "Hey, you idiot! You might have a world record turkey there." And and uh, <laughs> at which time they start shoving the innards back in the turkey. <laughs> and I, and I never heard that together. end of the story. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the way that that's the way it's been told to me a couple different times. Um, and I don't remember. Okay. If, if Chris himself, uh, Chris mentioned it at, uh, Chris mentioned it at the, um, at the funeral a little bit. Uh, but we didn't get, you know, that in depth in it cause there just wasn't time, but yeah, it sounded like a crazy story. And the, the funny part about it is, is the national wild Turkey Federation, although they had to acknowledge it was the world record Turkey, um, they didn't want to get anywhere close to that video footage because <laughs> wasn't Todd in like <laughs> flip flops and sunglasses and I don't think he had shorts on. But uh, yeah, I mean, oh, he really? would, I think because so, he would. Yeah, if he would. He, he was yeah. just going out there for fun and and not. Yeah, ser- ser- totally. Yeah, seriously. So 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 you're saying the NWTF they didn't want to like make it like a like a big highlight thing because he was just kind of goofballing it that night and happened to <laughs> stumble onto this world record turkey. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the way it. The that's perfect. That's a perfect story, though. That's a great story. I think yeah, so. That's good stuff. Yeah, and, and yeah, they just uh I did a I did a show with Jason Lupartis from the National Wild Turkey Federation and and uh it, that was prior to any of the stuff with Todd happening. Um so, so I didn't really bring it up because I just never really wanted to remind anybody of it really at that point, but now it's become sort of a, a fun story to talk about. But uh um speaking of fun stories, is there any uh, any story in particular um, and it can involve drinking because God knows plenty of them did. Um, any any fun stories that you guys want to share, either of you? Yeah, I mean, I, go look, ahead, Jared. Do you, you, you do you have do you? I, I want you to start this storytelling because I didn't my, know. I, well, let, my, let me let me say real my, quick. I don't. I didn't know your relationship very well, Jared, with uh, with Todd. Like we have all been very close. But I would see Todd leave my booth and go to your booth and kind of talk to you a good bit at these trade shows. And I always said, man, you know, I could see a brotherhood there. So I'd, I'd like to know sort of what that entailed, you, your guys' relationship. Yeah, that, I, I mean, we definitely, I mean, we we all met, well, I guess, Logan, you met Todd a little bit before me, but we all met around that same time. And, it, and it's kind of funny because I met you, set, like, like, we didn't get introduced you know, we all met separate from one another. So it's a small world yes. kind of thing. And then pretty soon it turned out that it's like, you know, I, I don't remember if, how it came out, but 
somewhere in there, like Todd realized like, Hey, Oh, you know, that, you know, Logan guy, he, yeah. he's a wild, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know? And, and, uh, yeah, you know, um, over the years at the shows, we, we definitely, you know, had a few drinks, um, you know, it tailed off a little bit more there near the end as, you know, I, I'm still kind of a, more of a nomadic single kind of lifestyle kind of guy or whatever. And, and so, uh, mm. You know, but we, you know, even that week before out in Pennsylvania, um, Logan, and he, you were there. I think that was Friday night uh, of, of Pennsylvania show this year in, in February when we all got to have a few beers together there. But I think my mm-hmm. most memorable time is what we kind of already talked about, you know, where I went down there and, and visited with him and his wife all weekend. And mm-hmm. I remember that. Friday night after after the turkey ordeal, I mean, we we sat up just you know he's got a nice uh, place down there and and we sat up and BS about everything under the sun you know until the wee morning hours I guess you could say and uh, it it was just great to it was always great to be around Todd because one thing about Todd is. I, I, you know, people, some, a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot of people necessarily, but quite a few people go through like points. You'll, you'll sometimes be around them and you'll be like, Oh man, man, maybe he's having a bad day or they're kind of in a more negative mindset or, or whatever. But Todd mm. always had this positive energy, whether it was what he was doing or, you know, he was also a good listener. Like when you were, mm. when you were talking to him he, he'd really dive in and try to dissect whatever you had kind of going on and and try to offer his you know perspective on on different things and and we definitely had phone calls over the years and at shows you know where we, we'd get some time one-on-one about what's going on business-wise or or whatnot and and be able to kind of like share that and it was always nice to get his perspective um on, on a lot of different things so um yeah yeah he was his social game was it was up there with the best best of them yeah i would say like i, I would double what you said i mean it's it's it, it you know it's rare you meet people like todd that were that they're so passionate for every day he was able to get something done he was he was hustling and i i think that's what rubbed off on Absolutely. me for todd was was, was was yeah was his passion for living life um i you know i seeing that for years and years you know i started with todd as a sort of a fan that first couple of days i met him but we were friends very quickly and i could tell you know i think he was that way with the with a lot of people like he you know like you said he would invest in the conversation he was a good listener he he wanted to get to know you his customers you know customers that he barely knew felt like they were his best friends so so i you know the legacy that guy's left is is one that i i think that we we would all want to strive to be like Todd, you know, to, like, to oh, be definitely. as likable as Todd. And, right. Yeah. And I, and I, yeah, it's, and that, and how many times in life do you meet guys like that or, or meet anybody like that yeah. where you right. can draw, you, you know, you can draw that sort of brotherhood without being brothers, you know, like there was a real relationship there. Um, so, so that, that, yeah, you know, for me with Todd, that that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm sitting here saying, man, our buddy's gone, but you know, what are we left with? And we're, you know, I've got this overwhelming sense of, Logan, get out of bed and go get the most out of your day. Go make people feel good. Go go make relationships with people and and and, and be interested in your family and, and and you know that's what he left me with. So that's a good a good character trait on top. Man. Yeah, absolutely. He had so much passion and at the same time, you you know, it's like you can't really pick. You know, I've thought about this like one word that describes Todd. I mean, he was so passionate. He was so energetic. You know, he was so driven about whatever he had going on, but also like we kind of already talked about, like, you know, it's like when I, when I came down there that weekend, I had, I had kind of a, uh, a design thing that I, I wanted to show him or whatever. And he right away immediately got like all fired up, excited about it. Like, wow, this is really, really awesome. Um, what, what, what you got here. And, uh, I, I never ended up doing anything with it, but, uh, but it was just cool to see his passion towards something that 
he, that, that was something that I just presented to him and he was, you know, at least I, I felt like half that weekend he was really fired up and excited about what I had, yeah. you know, and, yeah, he built, and so he built just, you up. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But it, it wasn't a bill. It was a natural, you know, it wasn't just, a, yeah. it, it wasn't mm-hmm. some like, you know, some, some people will build it up in kind of like the, I don't want to say fake way, but you, you kind of understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying. He, he was real authentic with his energy and, and, and what, mm-hmm. and, and what he had to say or what he thought. And he, he, uh, he believed in, in what he was saying, what, you know, whatever that might be, you know, he was yeah. convicted. But. He, he wasn't a motivational speaker that you needed to pay to hear. Um, I, mm-hmm. I, I think it would right. be the best way that I could describe it. Um, he was a guy that uh, you could, like you just got done saying, present an idea to, and as crazy or silly as, as it might seem to 90% of the population, Todd seemed to have a knack for like understanding you and, and your why and and um, what problem you were trying to solve. Like he just got it, it seemed like. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And and the one thing that I really appreciated too is Todd was the kind of guy where he, he would tell you his honest truth about like, you know, what he, he didn't tell you necessarily what you wanted to hear, which I love that. I love getting perspective from people that are going to tell me what they truly believe, not what just tell you what you want to hear or, right. or, or puff you up. You know, I mean, if there was, you know, something that, I presented to him over the years, like, what do you think about this or, or, or whatever it might be. If he didn't, if he had some reservations about whatever that might be, he'd tell it to you. And I really appreciate that type of honesty and that type of truth. You know, uh, you know, other people obviously have that as well, but he was 100%. He was going to tell you what he truly believed or what he, his perspective you know, he stuck to truth, and I love that about him. Uh, that's no Absolutely. bullshit. <laughs> there, there's no bullshit there. I mean, he just, uh, good, bad, or ugly, he just told you the way he saw it. And it, and it really wasn't about him being right. Um, or it, I don't think it really was ever about him being right. It was just the way, he, it was his perspective. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I... I uh, a neat thing that started happening at like sort of a tradition uh, of mine with Todd. Um, and I kind of got a kick out of it at first. Uh, when, when he would shoot a nice buck and, and let the social media world know I would, uh, it happened. I don't know what year it was, 2011 or something, eight years ago or something. I would call him that night because I knew that, you know, he'd be celebrating stuff. I would call him when it would, you know, maybe like 10, 11 o'clock central time. And, uh, and just, it just, I, I kind of wanted to hear the story. It, it happened just once, it, it, you know, to start. And I don't remember which buck it was. I didn't get caught, caught up in whatever names or whatever, but I knew how ate up he was about his deer. And I knew that, you know, he got really emotional when he would shoot a deer, like more so than about anybody. And so I called him one night and, and the Joker went into, you know, he picks up the phone. He goes, Logan, I, I killed a man. I killed a man. <laughs> and it's just kind of like, and it's just totally like out there. And I mean, and I don't like, look, I love hunting as much as the next guy in this industry, but like, I, I have never felt that kind of connection with that furry animal. And so he's like, and so, I, I can just imagine him laying there with that deer, just you know, patting him. And I said, "Man, tell me about it." And he says, "He's so beautiful," and he just goes on and on. I said, "Man, this is great," you know. So I let him talk for about an hour, and I think he told me his story four times consecutively, and and with each detail. And and uh, so so after that one night, I said, "Man, I'm going to do this every year with this Joker. We're going to make a tradition." And we did that for like five or six years. I would call him the night of. And, um, and, 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 you know, what I recognized with Todd was that his passion for deer sort of outweighed his passion for everything else. And, and these last few years, since he met the love of his life, Katie, his wife, and got married, you know, our relationship 
relationship sort of changed, Todd and I, from talking about deer all the time to talking about, you know, just maybe other priorities in life, like marriage or, or you, you know, you know, husbands out there, marriage, you know, you need to talk about that every once yeah. in a while. And, and, and so, you know, we started connecting on that sort of level, just the daily walk through what our jobs were in life, other than just chasing our hobby of deer hunting. And, um, I, what I wanted for Todd for the last few years was to really recognize that there was more in life than that, you know, crying over that dead deer, you know, like that kind of passion ought to be found in other places. And I, I don't know about you guys, you guys are as close to Todd as I was, but I saw in the last few years, this total diversion of his passion towards Katie, towards their marriage, to where at least she was getting as much love as the dead deer, you know, and that really tickled me uh, to my core just to see him grow up in a sense and recognize how special uh, that relationship was. And, and, and I, could you guys double me on that? I mean, would you agree? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not in those same shoes, but you, you could definitely sense it and not just, sense it but he would actually you know talk about that you know in in especially the past like six months i noticed it you know we Mm -hmm. had a few different phone calls over the phone obviously and uh he yeah he'd talk about what he had going on with tree thrasher and he'd talk about what he had going on deer wise but there was a part of his conversation over the phone in each and every one of those where he would talk about Katie and family and the baby coming on the way yeah. and and that and that was something that he he didn't really have you know as much before he, he didn't really I mean all you talked about was deer before that really or or what mm-hmm. you had going on with your company and you know it was it was bit more business talk but as friends talking and you yeah. know especially you know those those past few conversations we had and even when we were out in Pennsylvania Mm-hmm. He, he was so excited. It, it was like the happiest, happiest. It was like, it was, it was beyond happy that I felt Todd was at. He had like an internal mm-hmm. joy uh, about yeah. him, you know, with his yeah. newborn son about excited about his tree thrasher out in Pennsylvania when he showed me his, his deer call, his grunt tube. And mm-hmm. he was really excited about all the seminars that he was going to be speaking. He's yeah, and he told me multiple times, you know, I'm just really excited to be doing these, you know, speaking events and be sharing what I know with people and, and getting them out mm-hmm. there and, and trying to help them be more successful on big deer. He was really ate up and, and passionate about that as well. So, um, you know, he was just, I, I think that, you know, where things had progressed with Katie and, and, and having the baby there, it, it just kind of like anchored him and f- brought a bigger fulfillment to his life that he hadn't ever had before and i think that's why you could sense and feel that internal joy that i felt like he had yeah yeah I, you know I, would you agree yeah jason oh yeah absolutely I, I i would i don't know what you know i'm sure there's some sort of clinical term for it there but there was definitely a shift within him um from the time that i spent with him in November prior to Baker being born. Um, you know, I was down there this year to deer hunt with him. And, um, and then, you know, we, you know, we got this whole trade show thing squared away. And, and, uh, last year I had talked him into doing the, the, uh, the seminar at deer fest and, and that went off, you know, great. And it came, uh, you know, we got a lot of good feedback on that and it's just like, as soon as Baker was born, you could just sort of feel his world just change. Um, and, and then with the, I got the phone calls every night while he was in Pennsylvania. And, um, if there's ever the, the biggest regret, um, that I'll have in with respect to, you know, my relationship with Todd, it'll be, not taking the time to go on that trip because he wanted um he wanted me to come just because i you know i did all the the 
the whatever the production work on the you know just the powerpoint and making all the stuff for him because he just wasn't that guy that was into that um but he could he -hmm. could relay it to me verbally and i could put it into the program and make it work for him and and uh i just wish i would have been able to go but uh i could just hear him change um, and I could hear the priorities in him change, and you could tell he was just as interested in being a dad and a husband as he was in, as being a, an innovator and a hunter and, and, and all the other things that seemed to be so paramount in his life prior to that, um, that sort of, I'm not going to say they took a back seat, um, the hunting and the, 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 the business part, but they definitely got lower on the list than what they were a year, a year ago. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I, yeah, you know, that, that, that is that, like for, for my personal relationship with Todd, that's where I was, you know, that's, that's where I think, I think all of us as men, that's where we should get to like all of us as hunters, that's where we should get to is, is recognize that they're there, you know, that, that we're only here for a bit of time here on earth for a bit of time. And whether it be, you know, 40 years or 60 years or 80 years and the big scope we're not here that long. And so I, I think that our relationships with those closest to us and around us are so very important and should be invested in. And man, I, I was so anxious to see Todd turn some of that passion towards his family. And man, he did that in the last four or five years. And I love that. You know, I love that he was able to, you know, get married to the love of his life build their dream home together, you know, Absolutely. get to experience, you know, the, 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 the pregnancy of his first child, his first born son. He got all that, you know, and he, and he killed like 50 big bucks. And in the meanwhile, you know, so like, he, <laughs> he, he, man, he just lived life to the fullest. And I'm, I'm tickled to death of where he got to in his 41 years of age. So, um, yeah, yeah. Left an impact, absolutely. Right, for sure. Yeah, no. Um, that's that's. That, I I mean, that's the best way to put it, right there. Is how you said it. You know, more and more as, as you get older, I think you start to look at things a little bit more like that. Like you have one life to live, and in the grand scheme of things, like you said, Logan, whether it's forty years or sixty or eighty it's not that long. And, and, mm-hmm. you know, you heard this when you were young, you heard this from old timers, it goes fast and faster as you get older. And, and it certainly mm-hmm. does. And, and, uh, so, uh, yeah, that, you know, I mean, it was great to see him kind of head that, and it kind of sucks, you, you, you know, it kind of sucks you into, and, and when you surround yourself with people, that are that are like that 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 make a shift it it causes you to evaluate things for your own self of of how you you know like i i mean i'm probably going to be the last man standing of the of the group no 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 i'm just telling any of the any of the you know what i mean like it's it's, 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 yeah right right. but but, you better hustle because he's about (laughs) j-rod oh yeah Okay. Uh, all right. This isn't about, this isn't about Jared. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you hit it on the head, though. That's that's where I, you know, I I want you know Todd's legacy to be left to his boy Baker as just being this awesome individual. And I think there's no doubt about that. He's going to hear that from anybody and everybody who ever met his father that that his dad, you know hung the moon. I mean, he, he was awesome. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and, and in, in Pennsylvania, like we keep referring to Harrisburg, if any of the, any of the listeners don't understand, we, Jared, myself, and, um, Todd sort of accidentally booked the same hotel. And so we were (laughs) at a 10 day show going talking hunting with with uh, with all these customers for 10 hours a day coming back to the hotel and i don't think we hardly went out to eat i think we really just nestled into the hotel room and hung out together and 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 had a few beers todd loved his craft beer then the the uh what's it called the uh the uh help me out the bells uh yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, a michigan, it's a michigan brew i know that 
Yeah, he tried to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 handed one of those to me years ago. This is probably, I don't know, seven, (laughs) eight years ago. He handed me one of those. Yeah, and I was like, (laughs) it ain't my gig. Not a gig. Yeah, it's like, not like, you know, it's too hard to But I'm not a craft beer guy. Like, too hard to Yeah, too hard to deal. I mean, you yeah. have to be a real manager. That's what it is. That's yep. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, so yeah, and, and we did. We had so. we we had time together at that show that is just you know, and and this is for anybody who doesn't know this too. This is like a week or two before his accident. So this is like fresh for us. And and we had we had we had time. I, I, my brother and I laid on the opposite bed of of Todd in his room, sipping a beer. My brother just had his first child a year ago, and he and Todd shared stories back and forth on kind of how it went, why they named their children, who they named them after. And Todd sat, and he just weeped, crying. And it was like, you know, seeing that, I was like, hey, there's that same emotion, maybe a little more so than when he killed his 190-inch deer and however many million people watch it on YouTube, you know, here he is crying about his baby boy. And I just, that filled my heart up, you know, like to see him come to that level of understanding, you know? Um, so, so yeah, man, we're, yeah, we're going to miss that joke. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I just, I, I remember out at that Pennsylvania show too, there was a, a moment that, well, he showed me his grunt tube and it was pretty loud at my, my booth and he, he's like what do you think you know and and i almost ended up breaking it because i was <laughs> goofing off a little bit and of course he had just bought me, he had just bought me a beer because because my little mini fridge was out of beer and uh he swung he swung by to get a beer or whatever and and i was out so he's like i'll go buy you a beer you know or whatever and i was like no you don't have to or whatever but he did anyways because that's what he would do and uh so he showed me his, his grunt tube and I, you know, I probably had a few beers in me by that point. And for those of you that are listening that don't know much about his grunt tube or anything really at all, he invented uh, a very unique grunt tube that I had never seen before. And of course, in that moment, I'm kind of screwing off cause I'm a few beers into it. And it, th- this grunt tube, it, it has, it telescopes out like the, um, uh, the end end of it does um, not like any other grunt tube I've ever seen. And uh, he was showing it to me and, and I got my hands on it and I kind of like started to toy with it and play with it. And I kind of like flicked it. If you can imagine like this telescoping tube that comes out of a grunt tube, I kind of like flicked it like a, almost like a whip. And I was like, dude, you need to get a holster design for this thing. Like, <laughs> like, how cool would that be? Like, I'm just screwing off, you know? And he's like, Oh my God. He's like, that's my only one. Don't break it, you know, or whatever. And I'm not, <laughs> you know, not, not thinking about that, but, uh, you know, it's pretty loud around there, but then Jason and Madison, you let me, uh, take a closer look at that grunt tube. And I really hope that that does come out because it, it's that, 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 uh, telescoping tube, you know, at my booth or behind my booth when it wasn't making so much noise in Madison, you could really tell that it has, it changes the whole tone of when you grunt, which is no other grunt tube I've ever seen carry, you know, has that same type of tone difference. You can change the tone with a normal grunt tube by like, say, sliding the the O-ring or placing your finger, you know, you know, I've seen different ones where you can place it, but you can't change it on the fly while you're actually exerting that grunt. And, and make that tone sound the same. And I really liked that about it. So it was just cool to share that. And I just, I guess where I was going with this whole story is, you know, several times started, you know, swung by the booth, you know, I think that was our booth was kind of positioned in route to his, where he was speaking. So he traveled through there quite a bit, but um, I remember one, one point and I'll never forget this is we sat there and be asked and, and whatnot, all of us. And, and he went to walk away and I just still had my eyes, you know, on him or whatever. And he got a few steps out of the booth or whatever. And all of a sudden he just V line 180 turned around and said, guys, let's take a group picture. Let's, you know, mm. which is, you know, mm. it was just kind of like something I'll never forget. It's almost like something went off you know, light bulb. And it was just, I'm so glad that, that we did. And, uh, I don't, I don't know. It probably has no value necessarily for, for maybe not necessarily anybody else, but, but it was just really cool when I look back on that, to have that moment with, you know, like, I remember that, 
like I just happened to have my eyes on him and it was like something went off in his mind and it was yeah it was just one yeah. of those kind of like things that sticks with you. You so know. yeah, you 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 corral, you corralled me in for that picture, so I get to W on that as well. Like I, I lit, that was an yeah, odd yeah, right. happening. I think I was I think I was trying to sell a four hundred dollar trail camera to somebody. You guys totally squashed myself for some picture, but so at the time, you know, you can kind of see see it in my eyes. Like, what am I? Come on, guys, you know, I'm here to sell. But <laughs> now looking back, I'm like, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't, yeah, I love it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. who has yeah. who who has that picture? I Facebook. I have Facebook. a picture, but <laughs> face yeah yeah. Todd took it with his phone, or we we took it, or whoever took the picture took it with, with mm-hmm. Todd's phone, and and so the original high res is on his phone. And then yeah, here again another crazy thing is my my buddy Jeremy who was helping me at that time. It was it was the second going into the second weekend of the Pennsylvania show. But anyways, I didn't know this until I, after everything was kind of happened or whatever, but Jeremy had actually just kind of taken a couple of random photos of me and Todd just, you know, carrying on a conversation, having a good old time. I had no idea that Jeremy had snapped just a, a few random pictures. So that was just kind of another mm. odd kind of happening thing. Yeah. You know, that's not, uh, a normal kind of occurrence or whatever, and, and so Jer- Jeremy's a huge fan. I was, yeah, yeah, and uh, he fired those over to me after, and I had no idea that he had ever taken them. So it was it was kind of really another cool kind of I'm glad he did moment. Yeah, um, that's that's so, awesome. Uh, so, yeah. I'd love to. Uh, so if I search on his Facebook page, I'd likely find it. Um, yeah, you you I, will. I he actually uh, he posted uh, okay. he posted at some point, guys. Yeah, he threw it up there and said something about us trade show carnies are the real deal. You know, something. Did he? I didn't. I didn't see that. But that's, he I, did. You know, he did. You know, I, you know, you know it's funny. You, are, yeah. Pretty poor. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you, man. No, he did. He threw that up there sometime after the show and. And said, uh, yeah, you know, because, you know, we, we do these trade shows and whoever's done a trade show knows that they can be, uh, quite taxing and doing them for like 12 years, the whole circuit, uh, it'll wear you down. And, uh, and we, so I think that, I think Jared, would you agree that sort of our brotherhood with Todd and yourself and, and myself has been built off of this? Man, we we go to these shows and sort of get to catch up whenever there's a show. You know, I think that a lot of that, you know, Absolutely. we kind of are carnies. We kind of are carnies. <laughs> carnies. No, no, you're the carny. Don't group <laughs> us in with what you got going on. Like, like, like. You know, well, this all stems from. Dude, I love from, it. From you know a few things back in the day. We always we always used to give Logan a hard time about that, and then obviously <laughs> I've been doing I've been doing this hunting. This, yeah, anybody I've been doing that's this seen him, <laughs> he <laughs> wants to shut me down. Now. See how he's cut, he's taking over the conversation right now. <laughs> I love because it. Because he doesn't I love want me it. to finish the story, but it's great. It's great. <laughs> don't tell you know? it, man. And, and, and here's the thing about here's the thing about nicknames. Nobody ever ever that I know of has ever liked their nickname, but it don't take long, and they just kind of like. You know, they're usually, usually they're kind of like closed to the nickname, and then all of a sudden it kind of grows on them, and they just accept it. And I'm, I'm glad you're finally at that point, Logan, where you've accepted. <laughs> it. Well, look, it beats my other nickname. It was uh, for for like 15 years they called me Squirrel at the hunting shows, and let me tell you, dude, Squirrel? that is the most di- yeah. That, isn't that disrespectful? Telling me I was 10 years old, climbing up and down. You've seen the tree stand booths at trade shows. They have a typically a carpeted <laughs> pole. And so I'm climbing up yeah. and down a 12-foot carpeted pole with my dad's climbing tree stand with a microphone, okay, attached to my face and a PA system pitching out to 50 grown men. I'm 10 years old telling them why they should buy this $400 climbing tree stand. And so, yeah, I, they called me Squirrel up and down the pole all day long, man. So, dude, I want to get um, some, so I want to get know. some video footage, some archive ancient <laughs> video footage of you doing this. I got to dig somebody. Yeah, somebody got it. Dude, 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 yeah, there. I'm 33 and I've been doing the shows for more than two thirds of my life. So, hey, 
Hey, you call me Carney all you want, man. I got a, I got, a, I got a show mom, a, a, a show grandfather, you know, Buster. My gosh, anybody who, oh, yeah. who's I'm been going to show Buster, Buster Easy Cut, Buster Greenway, man. I, he's like my papa. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good old Buster. Yeah, I met him that same show season too. That that's it. That that's Todd. it. Todd, Todd, Todd loved Buster too, you know, until, until he created wicked tree gear. I think that the, 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 the ratchet pruners and the wicked tree gear may be separated a little bit, <laughs> but, but yeah. Indeed. Oh my gosh. That is a, it's a diff, definite, definitely a different world. Uh, <laughs> that, that whole trade show thing. I only did, um, you know, the shows that I did, at least in the in the recent you know five years I was sober, but you know prior to that I all that they ever were for me was a drinking excursion and not really work. Um, for you guys, it's and I got to experience that firsthand running the booths this year. Um, it was mm. it's a lot of work, um, and I can't even mm. yeah. I can't even imagine what you guys have to go through in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's it, a long week, yeah. but it's it it it, it it's, it's a you know it's a, it's like anything. I mean, you put your time in, and it's a great show. There's you know thousands, tens of thousands of people that come to the show, and so I mean, and there's business to be had there. So we're happy to do it, but we couldn't get through it right. without guys like Todd and and and, and myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, you're kind of right, though. I mean, we all kind of like at the end of the day, or or getting close to the end of the show, you know, you, you know, if you if you, like you said, if you've never done a show circuit or or done that type of stuff for a living, and and go there, and it, it's not just a three day, sh- you know, a lot of these shows are three day shows. Pennsylvania is the exception at nine days, but it's not. You you have a day of getting everything ready. You have a day of travel to a lot of these shows or, or through the night. And then you're set up at your booth and everything there. And then, you know, and then you're, you're, you're talking to people all day and, you know, at the end of it, you, you, you might be sick by the end of it. Cause you're coming in contact with all these different people. You might not have a voice left, you know, depending on, you know, how many people you're talking to. I mean, and by the end of it, you're just, you know, you'd miss it if you didn't do it. But at the mm. same point, by the end of it, you're you're ready to have just a little bit of break. And I think anybody can relate to that. No different in their own job sense. There's certain tasks of their job or their entire job where you do it enough, you know, and 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 you need a little break of, from it just to regroup. And and uh, so yeah. Yes, well, sir. Well, hey, any. Any final thoughts, guys? I know I've taken, uh, believe it or not, 50 minutes of your time. Um, any final thoughts before we <laughs> wrap it up? You know, I, I think I think for, for me, you know, I just, I, I wanted to shine light maybe on a, on a, on a, a Todd that not everybody got to see. And I, and I hope that that's happened tonight that, that, you know, Todd wasn't just about, shooting big deer and he he made one heck of a good friend to all of us and 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 on a on, on a personal brother relationship i mean the guy was awesome and uh and so you know i want uh i want that legacy to live on you know i want everybody that's heard his name used his products uh watched his videos um man just just know that you are in the presence of uh one heck of a human being and and we can all strive to be more like todd you know day in and day out yeah absolutely yeah i i mean there's there you'll well only ever meet one todd pregnancy i mean he is just one of a kind in so many ways and i'm glad you hit on that logan is these later you know last year especially you know where he kind of like took that passion that he had for whitetails and he still carried the passion he had for whitetails, but he exerted that, you know, with his wife and, and child Baker. And, uh, you know, that's, that's some, you take that for granted in the moment, but going back to kind of what you said a little bit earlier, you know, you're only here for a short while and you don't know how long that's going to be. You don't, you don't know if it's tomorrow or 20 years from now. And, uh, so you've heard this over the years is, is live life to the fullest what you think about doing if it if it comes to you you gotta you know whatever that might be um to be a better person or a better husband or wife or or whatever that might be or father you do it don't 
wait till tomorrow because tomorrow yeah. might not come or, and, and, uh, and, uh, that's one thing that I think Todd did very well in that last year is, is transitioned into that. And, uh, mm. you know, obviously this is a hunting podcast, but it was kind of cool to get off on a, another aspect of, of Todd's life. So, um, absolutely. Obviously we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him dearly. Certainly truer words have never been spoken. We absolutely will miss Todd dearly. That's going to wrap it up for um, our tribute to Todd shows. Um, If I'm able to get with Katie, we're going to possibly have her on at a later date. But for the time being, we're going to get back to business as usual. Next week, we'll be back with a turkey hunting show with uh, Jeff Fredericks in uh, in time for the... um, second half of the first season of the Wisconsin season and uh, many of you are already turkey hunting so hopefully uh, you can tune in for that next week as well with that I'll begin to close out the show for the week thanks again for listening thanks to Ozonics for making this show possible without them we couldn't do what it is that we do don't forget if you're looking for an ozone generating machine to go to www.ozonicshunting.com and uh, check out the different specials that they've got going on. They had some pretty crazy deals at some of the trade shows this uh, this spring that are out there. So uh, make sure to check out the website. Uh, they've got uh, they've got some awesome deals going on right now. So um, don't forget to uh, go to iTunes and uh, give us a review if you cert- if you could. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, five is great. Um, one is okay. That's all the better we are. Uh, definitely. With that, I'll close out the show for the week. Thanks for listening. Peace out.